Hi, I'm Derek Killam with Intune Music and Sound, and we're ready for another uh, episode or another installment of You Can Do It Yourself. So what I want to show you how to do today is uh, trombone slide. Now there's lots of different thoughts on this, so I'm going to explain this up front. A lot of guys on a trombone slide say that you need to use a cream. A lot of guys uh, prefer a product. There's a product called Slide-A-Mix. It's kind of a multi, uh, it, it's not really a cream, but it's not really an oil. But a lot of guys say, hey, let's just use a slide oil to get things going. And that's what we're going to show you how to do today is to oil your trombone slide with slide oil so you can do this yourself. You don't have to, uh, it's not a hard process. There's a couple of things I want to show you, a couple of things we need to, to look at before we get going. So uh, let me just demonstrate a few things. This is a trombone slide, came out of one of our beginning uh, trombones. And I want to show you a few things about it. Uh, the trombone slide's probably one of the most important uh, pieces of the trombone because that's how you change the pitch. That's what you use to actually play the instrument, if you will. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's two inside tubes slide inside two outside tubes. Okay, the airflow goes through here and, and as you make it longer, it changes the pitch. You make it shorter, it'll adjust the pitch back the other way. It's important that the slides are in the right tubes. How do you know which, which way it goes? I'm going to show you a real easy way. This is called a slide lock. Okay this piece rotates and when the trombone's not being played this is uh, something you should make sure you do every time you're not playing you lock your slide so if i pick it up the slide's not going to fall okay the, the slide is locked that way if your slide lock is not holding your slide locked in in that position you need to bring it into your local music store and let them bend that back into shape that's an important safety and and maintenance option on a trombone you need to make sure your slide lock works but it's also the easy way to make sure that you have the slide together correctly because uh, on your inside slide tubes, you have your, uh, you have your receiver, the part that goes to the bell, you have your mouthpiece receiver, and on that mouthpiece receiver, you have that slide lock, that rotating piece, and then if you look on the outside tube, you actually have the second half of the slide lock mechanism, so this tube needs to go into this outside tube so it'll lock properly also make sure that you should get it uh, put together correctly okay like to show you that stuff before we take something apart so if we have to put it back together you know which way it goes so let's uh let's think about this i want to make sure that my slide slides as, as good as it can and i need to put some oil on it do i take the whole slide apart please don't okay you don't have to do that if you're just going to use slide oil i actually recommend that you don't and i'm going to show you why if you happen uh, i don't want you to get worried if, you, if it happens to come apart while you're uh, oiling what you have here like i said is your two inside tubes going into your outer slide watch this to put it back together if it happens to come off i'm just going to put that inside tube there and that other inside tube should line right up with that other see how easy that went because my slide's in alignment. Uh, again, you just kind of set that there, line the other one up with it, tilt them together, and they go in. I'm going to show you something to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. I've got another slide here that I know for a fact isn't in line. Again, it's got my slide lock. I take my lock off. I'm going to intentionally take it out. And if you'll look, when I set that slide tube down, you see how that doesn't line up? It's not off by much, but it's it doesn't line up. I actually have to kind of maneuver the slide around to get it to go in there before I can get it back in. Now this will still slide, but and you probably can't hear it. There's kind of a gritty, uh, there's metal rubbing on metal. My slide's not going to work the way it's supposed to. This one isn't off by much. I've seen them much worse than that. I've seen them where if I hold the the inner tubes, the outer tube won't even fall on its own if it gets dinged up a lot of times and I'll tell you this a lot of times this outer tube if you're not careful it'll get a ding in it on a music stand or on your case or another person bumps into you and if you get a dent on this outside tube it's actually going to freeze that tube up those are things that slide oil won't fix you're going to need to get your slide if, if it's off alignment like this one is if it's out of alignment or if uh, there's a dent then you're going to need to bring it in to your local shop and let them take a look at it, okay? That's a bad slide. Back to our good slide. It's really easy. As long as you know that you have your, your tubes together the correct way, you got your slide lock with your slide lock, all I want you to do 
I'm on the table, if you'll notice. I have my end pin sitting on the table. That means I can basically support it just by holding the, I'm gonna pull it out a little bit and I don't have to worry about this falling to the floor. If, uh, if, you wanna, if you're sitting in a chair, you can just set that on the floor and lift this out that same way. I'm gonna take the cap off of my Intune slide oil. I'm just gonna run some oil down that slide. Gravity's gonna help me out. Gravity is gonna make sure that that goes around the tube and down the tube, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna get real technical with you, but I'm gonna explain something to you. This, this inside tube, it's not the same diameter all the way down. It's actually larger at the very, I'm gonna pull it out a little farther. I don't want you to do this, but I'm gonna do this. Right here, if you'll notice, the tube gets wider. That's called the stocking. You don't really need to know that, but that's what it's called, the stocking. I need that oil to get down to that stocking. That's the only part that should actually touch the outside tubes. That small area is what rubs or what, what creates uh, the sliding motion. So I use gravity to help me out. Like I said, I'm just gonna put a few drops of oil, uh, let it run down my slide. You say, Derek, can you get too much valve oil? Well, technically, yeah, you can. You don't need to uh, put so much on there that it just pools up in the bottom of your slide. It'll create a nasty surprise for you if you tilt your horn up too far and it starts running back down into your mouthpiece and into your mouth. You don't want to do that. Just enough to get it coated. Uh, once I get that on there, make sure my slide lock's undone. I'm going to move it up and down a couple times to make sure we get a good coating, a good even coating all the way around. I'm going to put my slide lock back on. I'll put it back in my case. Uh, oiling your slide's really an easy job. It makes your horn last longer. It's good maintenance. I would do that at least once, probably twice a week. Sometimes you may have to do more. It depends on how much you play. I will tell you this, if you haven't played in a while and you take your horn out, your, your slide's gonna be kinda sticky and, and gritty sounding it's cause all that valve oil dried up. So you'll need to do that if you haven't played in a while. You need to make sure you oil your valve, or your slide, excuse me, before you start playing again. But not hard, it's good maintenance for your horn and it's something you can do yourself. Thanks.